Psalms 123, a song of degrees. Unto thee lift I up my eyes. And the thee is to God. I is, and my, my eyes is the brighter the song. We're, the, we're under God. We're not over God. It's a humbling. When Jesus mentions the two men that are praying, the publican is, is down on his knees and wouldn't even look up. And with the Psalms being a song, is you're looking up, you're praising God. In sin, your head should be bowed down, and praising God, your head should be lifted up. O thou God that dwelleth in the heavens, plural. And he's in the third heaven. That's his dwelling place. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, employee and a boss, they look into the, the to the master, and as the eyes of the maiden unto the hand of her mistress, a little servant girl, look into the one that's over her. Looking for a supply. Looking for defense. And to add another one to look to not to be caught. When I believe it's Ephesians chapter 5 when Paul's speaking about an employee to employer relations. He says not with eye service. In other words, you're not to work because your boss is watching you. You're to be working even when the boss is not looking and being, listen, when he does come around the corner, you're not looking to see, you know, oh, all right, everyone get back to work. Here comes the boss. You're not to do that. And there are some employees who will be like looking for the boss not to be caught and to be doing something when he shows up. Or you're looking for supply. You're looking for protection. You're looking for your, your check. And what is those to do? Our eyes wait upon the Lord our God. He is your, he is, God is to be your supply, your defense. And you're not to be looking around the corner, you know, waiting for the Lord to show up and start doing something. Because you know what? You're going to be, he says you're going to be caught as a thief of the night. You don't know when the Lord's coming. Don't act like, hey, everything's hunky-dory. I'll start working with, oh. You mean the signs of the time? We're in the end days. Let's let's get working. Because you know all these weird earthquakes and all that. And the Bible said, yeah, but that's not our time. God never said because there'll be earthquakes in dire places that's going to be the rapture time. We have no idea when the rapture. You ought to be working just to be working because the rapture could happen right now. It, it could be long off. And we don't know when the rapture is going to happen in relations to the tribulation. Rapture could happen and you can have a whole year before the tribulation starts. And as you wait on the Lord, you're to seek the Lord for supply. He'll supply all you need. You're to seek him for defense. He'll protect you. And you are to seek him not to be not working. When he does come, let him find you working, the Bible says. Unto that he has mercy upon us. God is very pleased when you call upon him for your needs. That is what he wants. When you go to your Father in heaven and say, I have a need, I have something, I want to come to you. God is happy, and happy is blessed, and mercy that he has upon you, that he loves you. And the relationship you are to have is a servant to the master, you the servant, God the master. And for the females, you, you are the maidens, and he is the mistress, the one in charge. Listen, there's that little girl that, that speaks of, uh, for Naaman who had uh, the leprosy. 
That little girl could have been bitter because her parents were killed by the army, but she speaks up and said, you know, if you go to my hometown, there is a God there that can heal you. Of She was not looking to the worldly stuff. She was looking to the God of her home. And she went to her mistress and told her that about God. And you know what they did in turn? They went and sought the God of Israel. In the end run, uh, uh, Haman, no, not Haman. The Syrian, can't think of his name now. I just had it, just said, you know what happened to him? Name in the Syrian? He got right. And he served God the rest of his life. So you will get fruits from God by looking to him. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. And you are to seek the mercy of God. For we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with scorning of those that are at ease. And with the contempt of the proud. And we are in that day and age today uh, with all these churches. And you know what? They're at ease. Here where we live, you may not be in Daytona Beach, Florida, but this is where we live. And when we go downtown to preach on the streets, we go down one main road. We turn off our road, turn on, turn on to the main road, and take it all the way down. Then we turn, we turn another major road that we turn a side road, and that's our parking garage. So with four turns, five or six miles, all the churches that we count along the way. And not to mention the fact of, of all the churches that are in this city. You would think that every single day that our door would be knocked on to confirm that we are saved and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior to go to heaven. I mean, the Bible says, go ye in all the world. You say, well, Brother Hayward, you don't knock on doors. That's right. I go more to passing out gospel tracts and being on the street. Okay? If that's the case, then there should be major street corners. When we're going to somewhere, we should see people with signs and gospel tracts. <coughs> and there's not. When we go into bathrooms, we should find gospel tracts. At my place in my employment, since February this year, I've only seen one time gospel tracts put in the bathroom. That wasn't by me. We're at ease. And we are proud. Look at our big buildings. Look at the bells. Look at our computer system that we got so we can put our boring messages out on the internet and all over the radio. Look how many record albums I sold or CDs I sold. How many pictures I have myself in girls' uh, bedroom walls. And yet, who's crying out for mercy to God? And they are people who are not looking for the master. They're not looking for the Lord. They are not seeking God for their supply. They're seeking the, the, the worldly Christians. They don't look up to the God of the heavens. And when you deal with the contemporary music, you'll be lucky if you find any of them. 
most of them will even tell you they're not saved. You've got to seek the God that loved you, that came down and left the heavens, to come down through the heavens to this miserable, rotten planet, to suffer and die, and to be arose from the grave that you may have life. You are to look upon him like you look upon your boss to give you your paycheck or supply your needs to do the job. You are to look and ask him for mercy. And you are to look upon others like they just don't want to do what well, I'm going to do. And it's just that plain and simple. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art.